Hey folks, welcome and today we're going to be looking at some really easy ways of creating beautiful 8-bit content inside a touch designer quickly, easily, effectively, and most importantly, efficiently so you can run this basically on any system and get really good results from it. Now this is going to end up being something that's really easy because we only really need one node. But the problem is most people never really look at this one node that we're going to look at today. And first I'm going to create a movie file in here. And I'm going to load up count.mov because that's a good clip with a lot of motion in it. Great. Now, a lot of the times when people are thinking about turning content either into 8-bit content in style or they just want to pixelate some content, I've seen a lot of different ways people approach this, but a lot of them end up being really either ineffective, just don't look good, or are just too taxing on the CPU and GPU for that matter. So for example, one thing I see a lot of folks do is they'll maybe make a resolution top and they'll try and physically downscale the image. Let's say let's go down to one eighth its resolution. And then maybe you wanna go even further, you know, one eighth back down from here until we're getting into this really kind of 10 by 5, maybe that's a little bit too much, we'll go quarter, 20 by 11, but you can already see we're losing so much quality of content and because of a lot of the interpolation happening, of course we could turn that off by going to the common page, maybe setting them to nearest pixel. It's getting there, but it's very hard to control this because you're just manually controlling the resolution. And then you're eventually going to get to the state where now that you have something good, you have to go back through that process again and actually turn the resolution back up. And let's say if I do something like turn this back up to the custom resolution and I can see the original resolution I had here was 640 by 360. And let me turn on nearest pixel. And you can see we're starting to get there. But first of all, this is really ineffective already we're taking almost 0.2 milliseconds on the CPU per every resolution top that we've created here. Now, of course, maybe you can get away with just having two, one to downgrade and then one to kind of re-up the resolution. But there's so many better ways to do this. And one of the ways I want to show you is something that I really love. And this is a top I think doesn't get enough love because it is kind of new. And that's the limit top. Now, limit top is really fantastic, and it is the top counterpart of a limit chop. So if you've ever used limit chop, limit top does essentially the exact same things, but on pixels. Now, what the limit top can do, aside from just doing the general kinds of limitations, like maybe clamp the range, or loop the range, or zigzag the range, is it has a ton of quantization features built in. So let's go ahead and plug this movie file into my limit. And what we'll see here under the quantization area is two different types of quantization. One is to quantize the values and one is to quantize the positions. Now, if this isn't super intuitive to you right off of the first reading, don't worry. But essentially what quantizing the value means is if you think about each individual pixel's value from zero to one, for example, if we're using 8-bit pixels, quantizing the value affects each individual pixel's value and says, okay, well, they can only move in increments of 0.1. Now that's going to give you an effect that's going to look like in some ways that kind of comic book styling where you don't have as much of a color gradient. And you can see as I turn this value step up or down, the higher I turn it down, the more quantization on the pixel level it's doing. And you can see as we continue to turn this up, we essentially just have less and less actual colors to work with. Now this is great, we're gonna come back to this, but for now we're gonna turn it off. And quantize position is what we want because this is really, really interesting. What this does is instead of quantizing each individual pixel's value, it actually quantizes the UV coordinate space. So if you think about the quantized value as almost like a Z depth on each pixel, whereas quantizing position quantizes on the X and Y. Now what this allows you to do is exactly what we wanna do with our 8-bit texture. If we go to round and we can immediately see that set to position step of 0.1, what it does is instead of having our UV coordinates, which really smoothly go from zero all the way to one in both directions, in this case, what we said is, okay, well, 
every step of the UV has to jump by 0.1. So if you can imagine our range going from 0 to 1, and now we said, okay, well, it's only going to jump every 0.1, it's almost like a division into 10 slices here. And you can see we have one slice, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we have a half slice on the end and a half slice on the beginning. Now this is really great because unlike the other process of doing the resolution tops or if you were going to try and do this pixelated effect through blurs, this is so easy to control because we can just grab this position step and the lower we turn this down, essentially the less of that quantization we're going to get. And then the higher we turn this up, the more of that quantization we're going to get. And then what happens is each individual box that we're creating, essentially this little UV boxes, they all end up sharing the same pixel value. Now this is great because I can just quickly and easily say, hey, you know what? For this piece of content, I need pixelation, but I still want to kind of see the numbers as if I was like playing an NES game or something. Now the cool thing is not only can we use this quantized position, but we can actually combine it with quantized value. So you can think about the quantized position giving you that 8-bit effect over the actual X and Y, whereas the quantized value is going to give us the 8-bit effect over the color range itself. So when I turn this on, you're immediately see more of these artifacts, and the higher I turn it up, the kind of more terribly grungy and 8-bit it looks. But even just having a little bit of this can really help give it that grungy, old-school 8-bit vibe. Now the cool thing with this is if you remember the performance of our previous setup, this is basically around 0.3 millisecond CPU and very little on the GPU, which essentially means that this is easier to control, is about the same, if not less, in terms of processing power required, and it's just going to give you so much better results because we can now literally plug anything into this and get a very similar result without having to worry about, okay, well, if my resolution changes, do I have to go into my resolution tops and maybe change some of their parameters? We don't have to worry about any of that. So I could even, for example, change this movie file in. Let me load up a banana. And bam, instantly, beautiful 8-bit banana. I hear the chip tunes already. And this extends to any kind of content we plug in. Doesn't matter the resolution, doesn't matter the format. I can plug in nature content and we're gonna get these kind of crazy 8-bit. You know, maybe if that's too grungy, you can adjust your settings here and just give it a little bit of that grainy quality. And you can, just like I said, you can really plug in any piece of content to this. For example, I have a Beeple clip on my desktop and instantly give that a real 8-bit pixelated vibe. Now, the cool thing that I always uh, tell people is don't be afraid to kind of use a lot of these materials, especially Beeple stuff that is available for us to use kind of across the board in projects. But always good to try and affect the inputs a little bit. So in this case, maybe if you wanted the Beeple content, but what you really liked about it was the motion and the colors and not so much the specific content, what you can do is go through one of these kind of 8-bit pixelation steps and then plug that into a blur afterwards. And then with the blur, you can crank up the filter size and start turning up the pre-shrink until now you just have this really kind of beautiful wash of colors and textures moving across that image. And that can just be a really nice background that you can use inside one of your projects. So hopefully that gets you up and running. Making these beautiful kind of low-tech, low-fi 8-bit graphics is super easy. All you need is the limit top. I hope you enjoy. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning Touch Designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for Touch Designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.